Anganghaseyo, and welcome to the Busan Midnight Movie. I'm your host, Donald. Folks, we got a strange one for you tonight, because tonight's feature is the football comedy slash marine recruiting film, Come On Leathernecks. Before we get to that, though, we have the next chapter of The Great Alaskan Mystery. Jim's life is spared from the explosion by an alternate take. All of his near-death experiences lead him to be an adrenaline junkie, and he starts robbing passers-by. Dr. House meets one of Jim's victims and feels an immediate spark. Then a staged radio message sends the group to an abandoned mine shaft, which Brandon collapses after their descent. And now, the penultimate episode of The Great Alaskan Mystery, Episode 12, Electrocuted. Let's start digging them out. It's tough, Bolton. We couldn't reach them now. Coming, Bolton? No. First, I'm going to find the gang that did this and wipe them out. They must be around here someplace. Well, are any of you going with me? Yeah, we're with you, Bolton. All right, you two take that side. Come on with me. Lucky thing that old cribbing wasn't strong enough to hold that dirt. You still got that spare play play? Well, it might be a drift of the old pocket mine. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's got to come out somewhere. See if the paracrons in any of those boxes. Do get past a half a dozen outlaws. Right. Down there, about 100 feet. Hey, where's that guard? Well, don't worry about him. He's all tied up and tucked away. Good. You ready? Yeah, we'll have to shoot our way out of there. And with one gun. I wish I'd...
power now. just so we can see them better. Crazy, are they? I mean, crazy like fire. <laughs> for him up here. Go back and get the others. We gotta get those flares out of here. You take the one over there and I'll get this one over here. I know all about your blundering. We can't stay here. Hudson will come back and forth and wipe us out. Hudson won't be there because you're going to get him first. I don't follow you. Listen, you'll be standing by gunsight mine with your men. At the proper time, House will turn the prayer turn on the mine. In the confusion, your men will go in and finish the job. the end of my rope. I can't work under these conditions. Violence, fighting, murder. Where are you going, Doctor? To see Hudson. I'm going to make arrangements to take the paraton back to Sierra at once. Please, Doctor, don't act in haste. I've made up my mind. The message come in from Brock. Turn the paraton on the mine building. Destroy everything you can. And be sure you get to Hudson's. Now what about me? Brandon is standing by. The explosion and fire will be his signal to attack. I could do it right now. They're all in the house.
afraid now would be a bad time to move to Paratron. Why? I can't promise anything. I just have a feeling things are coming to a climax. Well, when they do, what will happen to the Paratron, to all my work? We'll have to take that chance. Just hope to strike before they do. And I still say we ought to go back to Pocket with the Marshal and his men and wipe them out. And I still say they're not going to sit there waiting for us. So you think your plan will work? I'm sure of it. It's only a matter of days. Maybe hours. Boys, nothing yet. Busy, Doctor? Yes, I'm very busy. What are you doing? Dr. Miller and I are about to conduct an experiment. So if you'll excuse me. Oh, sure, go right ahead. Don't mind if I watch, do you? Dr. Miller is in a rather nervous state. Uh-huh. Too much excitement, huh? If you please. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You fool. Leave those chemicals alone, or you blow us all up. Yeah, well, I, I, I guess I'll be going. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Hello. Oh, why, why is it loaded? What are we doing? We were about to measure the speed of the life beam. Oh, oh, yes. I've been making preparations. I see. What did Mr. Hudson say to your leaving? Well, we'll wait a few days and see what develops. There are some angles we're sure of. That radio message that fooled us into going to the abandoned mine was obviously a trap. And secondly, that outlaw who told us of the radio was prompted to do so while he was right here. Because naturally, he didn't figure on being captured at the hideout. So it was an inside job. He got it from one of our men. None of the miners was in the house, Pop. Nobody had a chance to talk to him. Said Jim. The boys are taking the cream of that hot quartz out right now. I thought you'd like to see it. You bet. That quartz is another reason why the doctor ought to stick around. Coming, Ruth? Yes, yes, I will. I don't think I should go down, Jim. Dad worries me. Well, your father's all right. We'll only be gone about 20 minutes. Come on. Well, all right. There you go. We'll direct the beam through the window against the hill and measure the speed that way. No, that figure won't get the distance, Doctor. Besides, it is too dangerous. I suggest we take the paraton outside and direct the beam into the sky, where it can do no harm. You're quite right. It was very thought of something. I'll get a couple of boys to help us. Seems to be getting stronger the deeper we go. What are we stopping here for? I want to show you the difference in the quartz on this top level. You're not getting the stuff out fast enough. Put the men on a double shift. Do we get a bonus? You're getting too much overtime already. Don't mind him. You'll get your bonus. I believe the array will reach 20,000 feet. Now we'll see. Here's the beam. 
Stand by, men, any minute now. Fifteen thousand. Give it more juice. We're depending on you to get the ore out. I'll get it out. Okay, Bob. Welcome back. Tonight's feature is 1938's Come On Leathernecks. Young football star Jimmy Butler is about to graduate from the Naval Academy and sign with the Chicago football team, but first he has to tell his father, Colonel Butler, that he won't be joining the Marines. His father's assistant, Lieutenant Dolan, shanghais Jim and drags him to the Philippines where they have to face gun runners while Jimmy's agent keeps trying to get him back home and... What is this movie? I've watched it and I still don't know what it is. Maybe you'll have better luck with tonight's feature, Come On Leathernecks. Get you here in time, didn't I? That's right, and I promised you a nice fat tip. Well, here it is. Bet on Navy. You can't lose now that I'm on deck. Hey, but how about a yeah, How about a picture? Hey, Peter, 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 how are you, Hank? Here I am. You can take that worried look off your face. Be with you in just two shakes. Never mind the uniform, Butler. What? You're not playing. Aw, oh, don't be a sore head, Hank. I had a little private business to attend to, and then the press held me up. You know how it is. I know how it's been. You were warned the last time. Well, that doesn't make me any less of a quarterback, does it? No. You're good. You're better than you think you are. But you're not playing today, and I don't even want you on the bench. Good old Hank. I'll forgive him by the time he cools off. That should be about the end of the first quarter. Look for five. That's his number. Oh, Steve, you crusty old gyrene. <laughs> How are you, Fred? I thought you were in the Philippines. I was on my way to Washington. I just went for the game. Lieutenant Dona my aide, Captain Felton. There's Lieutenant Ainsley. Colonel Butler, Lieutenant Dolan. How do you do? You know, I've been reading so much about that son of mine, I thought I had to stop off and see if he was really such a fireball as they say. 
Where is he? I don't see him out there. Why, I guess he's in the dressing room. What's the matter with him? Why isn't he playing? I hate to have to say this, Steve, but the coach had excellent reasons for keeping him out of this game. You see how it is. He's been taking pot shots at training rules. And academic reputations, too. Oh, he was all right until the spotlight hit him. He'll be all right again once it's off. Sorry to hear that. I thought that keeping him out of this game might teach him a lesson. But now that you're here, I guess we can skip the lesson for today. Lieutenant Avery, tell the coach to put young... Just a minute. Thank you, Fred. But a son of mine is no different from any other man when it comes down to regulations. I don't want any favors granted him. Excuse me, gentlemen. Lieutenant Dolan, bring Jim to the hotel. Aye, aye, sir. yard. Peters made the tackle. Time out for Navy. Did you hear that? One yard and three down. Well, it won't be long before Hank sends for little Jimmy. Hello, Jimmy. Well, hi, Dolan. How are you? Gee, I'm glad to see you. What are you doing here at the game? I came with your father. Is Dad here? Gee, that's swell. I've been wishing you'd see me play. Yeah, he's been wishing the same thing until he talked to Captain Felton. Then he went back to the hotel. The hotel? What did the captain say? He said you were on the blacklist, Jim, that you wouldn't be out there today. Did Felton say that? He did. Well, they can't keep me out of the game. Jimmy! Listen, they need me. The Army's got them running backwards. And you can't stop them. That's what I call carrying discipline too far. Let's get out of here. After all, what's football? A game. Soldiering's a life. Not for me, it isn't. What do you think the papers will say about me not playing? Forget it. You'll have other things on your mind when you're a Marine officer on active duty. That's just it. I'm not going to be a Marine officer. I'm going to play professional football. Let's have that again. I'm quitting the service. I've got offers that'll make me as much in a couple of years as a lifetime in the Marines would. I'd be a fool not to take them. And the world's biggest chump if you did. Take a tip from me. Stay with the Marines. You'll be way ahead. Way ahead of what? You've been in the service 10 years, and what have you gotten out of it? These. And they'll get you about $2 in the nearest pawn shop. Maybe that's all they are worth to you. You got them easy. Four years in a nice, cozy school. But when you make your stripes the hard way... I'm sorry. I'm not ridiculing you. I'm sure Dad'll see my side of the question when I tell it to him. It's not going to be easy for the Colonel to take. He's been looking forward to seeing you in the service ever since I met him. I think he can stay in the shock. Dad likes straight talk, and I'm going to give it to him that way. How do you do, sir? You look mighty fine, Jim. Thanks, Dad. How have you been? Fit as a fiddle. I've averaged two touchdowns every game this season. Yeah. I've read all about your athletic ability. Oh, so I even get in the Philippine papers. I wish you had seen me play today, Dad. I wish I had too, Jim. I guess you know why I was kept out of the game. Yes, I do. I'm not going to lecture you. There was a time when I thought rules were made to be broken. <laughs> Must be in the butler blood, I guess. But when you're in the Marine Corps... I don't know, Dad. I've had nearly four years of rules and regulations already. Yes, and you learn the discipline and dependability of the backbone of the service. The toughest part of soldiering isn't always the fighting. Dad, there's something I've got to tell you. In six months, I graduate. No, no. Six months and 11 days. I've been counting them off for four years now. 23 years, really. You know, you had a date with the Marine Corps from the time we first found out your name was going to be Jimmy instead of Jeanette. <laughs> your mother used to laugh at me when she caught me checking off the days in the calendar. She brought you nearer and nearer to Annapolis. And one day I found her marking them off.
Hello? Lieutenant Dolan speaking. Yes. The Colonel's ready. It's the Air Force, sir. The ship is on the line. I played hooky from staff headquarters. Come over here and see the game. The last game of the season. You didn't get to see me play. Never mind, Jim. You're going to make it all up to me in six months. At graduation. I'll be in the front row watching you. Thanks, Dad. Now just remember this. There's work for us butlers other places beside the football field. The Marine Corps is the big thing in our lives. Goodbye and good luck. Well, see you later. like a bellhop. I'll wait till we see you in a marine outfit. You'll never know. I'm going into something where I'll make some real dough. And you don't mean a bakery shop, do you, Jimmy boy? Hello, Curly. Have you told your papa yet? No, he didn't show up. I'll call him up and tell him. Hmm, so I have to wait some more. Listen, are you going to be a football player or a cop with a seagoing beat? If you don't sign this thing pretty soon, I'll have to tear it up. Can you do anything the public will pay to see? Yeah. Run a battle wagon. A battle wagon? Say, that's something new, ain't it? If you can get six of those, I'll put on a race in Madison Square Garden. What do you think? What do I think? I think you're nuts. Ugh. Jimmy boy, you're practically a millionaire. Am I gonna build a team around you? That's the spirit. When opportunity knocks, you don't want to have cotton in your ears. Yes, yes, of course I'll see him. Well, glad to see you again, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. Sit down. It's too bad Colonel Butler had to miss the graduation. I'm sure he would have enjoyed it. He certainly would have, sir. Right now, he's on his way to Manila. Emergency orders. Manila? What about his son? Well, that's why I'm here, sir. Jim and I are sailing in two weeks to join the Colonel in the Philippines. Splendid. Splendid. Active service will do Jim a lot of good. I'll send for Lieutenant Butler. Oh, if you don't mind, Captain Felton, I'd rather tell him the good news myself. I'll go right to his quarters. Yes, yes, of course. Goodbye and thank you, sir. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Come in. Hello, Jimmy. Hello. Hi, Dolan, you old leatherneck. Hey, where'd you leave Dad? Well, to tell you the truth, Jimmy, I left him in San Diego. In San Diego? Boy, they certainly shuffle him around. Well, all the same, I guess a wire that I'm resigning will reach him somewhere. That's what I want to talk to you about, Jimmy. We can have a minute alone. Well, you better make it snappy, Sergeant. And listen, I got this boy under contract, so no chiseling or I'll see you in court. It's all right, Curly, it's all right. You worry too much. Don't forget we gotta be in Chicago tomorrow. <laughs> Who's flannel mouth? You mean to say you've never heard of Curly Maxwell, the professional football manager? He's made millions for other athletes. He's gonna make my pile for me. Yeah? Hey, what about Dad? What's the best way to let him know what I'm doing? Write him, wire him, or call him up? Want to take my advice? Talk to him personally, man to man. That's something he's entitled to. Well, you ought to know he can take it. You know him better than I do. He can take it all right, but are you man enough to tell him to his face? What do you mean? Oh, I don't mean it that way. This may be the last time in years you'll have a chance to see the old gent. You never can tell in the Marines where you'll be from one day to the next. He's entitled to see in a Marine uniform once in his life. All right. Wire him and tell him we're coming out. Swell. Am I going to put that boy into the chips? Is he going to play himself into the upper brackets? Sure, sure. He told me to tell you to get him a front collar button. Sure, a front collar button? I'll have him wearing diamond studs. Here, get yourself a cigar. Now, where'll I find?
my dad. First, you have to meet the commanding officer in there. Why not, if that's marine formality? Sure it is. Just step up and say, Second Lieutenant James Butler reporting for duty, sir. Yeah, but I'm not reporting. I'm just a marine formality. All right. You can't come in here without a pass. Now beat it. Pass? What do you mean, pass? I pay taxes, don't I? How did you get that gun? I bought that What's gun What's all the for trouble you? here? That's him. That's the guy. You stole my boy. You bring him out here. You know I got a contract with him. He's got a contract on Uncle Sam now. Oh, trying to ring in a relative on me, huh? Well, you can't get away with it. I chartered a plane to come down here and bring him back. He's got to play football for me. He probably will someday. Yeah? Yeah, but you won't care for him then. No? No. He'll be tripping all over his beard. You'll regret this. I'll have you both transferred, and I'll take care of you. Why? Officer's mess at 6.35, sir. All right. You bunk on that side of the room, Lieutenant. Bunk here? I'm not even unpacking. I'm going to spruce up, find Dad, tell him what I've got to tell him, and pull out of here for Chicago. That's what you think. The Marines have other plans for you. What are you getting at? Where's Dad? Where can I find him? He's here, isn't he? Nope. I thought you told me he was in San Diego. I told you I saw him last in San Diego. He'll be back in a week. You knew he wasn't here all the time? You dirty double-crosser, this is the last cheap trick you're gonna play on me. You came here to tell your dad you're quitting the service. And now you're glad he's not here because you're not man enough to face him. You know why I'm here. All right. I'll stall around for a week. There won't be any stalling. You'll have a week of regular officers training under me. And it won't be like that football or beanbag you played at the academy. Listen, it takes more brains to play football than you've got in that thick skull of yours. I ought to pound it in for you right now. Do you know the penalty for striking a superior officer, Lieutenant? A year on the rock pile. Go ahead. All right, you win. I can take anything you've got around here for a week. If at the end of that if time... What? If at the end of that time, you'll take that uniform off for 10 minutes. Is it a deal? Yes, it's a deal. And when you address me, say, sir, and stand up. Sir, it'll be worth a week of my time just to bend that chin into yours, sir. I'm a citizen, and I got constitutional rights. I want to see somebody in our dock. All right. Maybe <laughs> like some stumble bum. Look, Jimmy, you shouldn't be up this late. You'll need plenty of sleep to keep in condition. Why don't you go to bed? I can't. I'm officer of the day. What do you mean, officer of the day? This is night. Ah, oh, you wouldn't understand. Order that civilian off the premises, Lieutenant Butler. Aye, aye, sir. Curly, beat it. Say, you want to talk to me. Beat that... it. Well, okay. But I'll be right out there keeping an eye on things, so don't try to pull anything funny. I gotta go. Well, well, well. Everything all right, Lieutenant? Everything's just fine. I love this night work. That's great. Carry on, Mr. Butler. Aye, aye, sir. Good night. Good night. And I hope you forget to wake up in the morning. Aiming and timing. Next. Poor aim, good timing. Next. Good aim, poor timing. Don't be in such a hurry to get rid of it. It's not a hot potato. Remember, you've got two full seconds to count before you throw it. Like this. One. Aim. Fire. All right, Lieutenant, you're next. That's good. Just good? It's perfect. Why waste time with a football when you can throw like that? That's my business. You'd make a better Marine officer than even your father dreamed. Why don't you give up this idea of quitting the service, Jim? Think of what it'll do for the old man. Is there anything else, sir? of a military nature. 
Yes, tomorrow. Mass maneuvers, military formations. Maybe I should have told you what a swell Marine you'd make. June, halt! Left, hey! Your objective will be that high rock overlooking the lake between hills 46 and 47. My job is to stop you. Any questions? Will you attack by land or water? You're an enemy country, Lieutenant. My plans are not available. Good luck. June, right, pace. Forward, march. That'll be enough. He wants to get the big dough, does he? Nice going, fella. He's one of my men, isn't he? Just the same, I'll see that you're cited in orders. Save it. And listen, I want you to get over the idea you're fooling me about Dad. I know he's in Manila and not coming back. Then why did you put this weekend? 
I'd do it again standing on my head to get a crack at that pan of yours. And tomorrow the time's up. Don't forget it. Okay, if that's what you want. Take arms. Inspection, arms. Port, arms. Dismissed. In five minutes, Lieutenant Dolan, it'll be my turn. My resignation's all written, and after I've collected for this week of pleasure, I'll be pulling out of here. Shall we go to our quarters? Just a minute, Lieutenant. When you dismissed the battalion, Lieutenant, you neglected to have the men sling their knapsacks. What do you propose, sir? I think you'd better get them off the field. Let's see, they weigh 50 pounds apiece. But you have a strong back, so you should make it in 25 trips. Aye, aye, sir. I'll still see you in our quarters in five minutes. All right, Dolan. You've had your fun, now it's my turn. You can pull out of this if you want to. Oh, no. I've waited a long time for this, and I'm going to get satisfaction one way or another. Remember, before the slaughter begins, you asked for and it. And I'm going to get it. I don't want this to be a grudge fight. What are you talking about? Will you give me a word for one thing? Quit stalling. I've got my orders. I'm sailing in a few minutes on the SS Madison. Just see that I get aboard. It'll be a pleasure. I'll carry on myself. This is going to be a lot easier than I thought. Now it's my turn. All right, Jimmy boy, no bones busted. Gee, for a minute, I thought you was taking a lacing. That unfinished business I told you about is all finished, except for one thing. Here, grab those sidearms and get a hold of it. Watch your step, boys. It's all right, Captain, we'll take care of it. One too many, eh? Yeah, I guess that last one got him. We'll be sailing five minutes. All that charge is going to the What are we doing with him? I'd like to put him down on cargo. Here, let's stick him in here. Well, we put him. Come on, over here. All ashore, this one ashore. Kid, you don't know your own strength. But come on, we gotta hurry. Come on, you wait outside. I'm going to lay him out in state. Okay, make it snappy. Hi, come on. Hurry up, Jimmy. Quit fooling around. We've got to get off. Boy, please, this ain't no time for a conference. The boat will leave any minute. Pardon, sir, the boat is left. What? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? You gotta let me off. Well, you have to get up with the purses, sir. Deck C below. Oh, I gotta get my boy off. Oh, steward. Where will I find the valet? Deck B, sir. Thanks. You have excellent taste in staterooms, Mr. Wagner. I'm sure I'll be comfortable here. And safe, too. I have the one adjoining. Please, I asked you not to do that. I'll speak to the purser right away about moving me. Now, Valerie. If you insist on treating me like a total stranger... That's not it. I don't mean to be unfriendly. It's going to be a long trip, you know. 
And for business partners to be as distant as... Oh, we're not business partners yet, Mr. Wagner. I know. And but... would you mind? I'd like to get into some other clothes and take a walk on deck. <laughs> All right. I'll see you at dinner. I'm sorry. You don't belong in this stateroom. You're telling me I don't even belong on this ship. Get out of there. All right. You asked for it. What are you doing here? Honest lady, I don't even know. I was in here and there was an explosion. It must have torn my clothes off. Well, what are you waiting for? Come on, get out. All right. Get out. It's all right with me, lady, but there's an awful mob of people out there. Oh, well, you can get out through this state. Say, pardon me. Would you mind telling me the name of your tailor? I can't help but admire that suit you have on. Well, th this rag here, I picked this up in San Diego with two pair of pants for 1850. Thanks. Sorry to have bothered you. <laughs> no bother. Uniform or no uniform, this time you're gonna get it. You fool all your life. You're in the Marines now. I can have you put in irons for the rest of the trip if you don't behave. And I still. If you think you can Shanghai me into the Marine Corps, you're mistaken. Read your orders again, Jimmy. You're due to report to the Colonel in Manila. And I'm here to see that you do. Now get into that uniform so you'll at least look like a man, even if you can't act like one. Boy, I've really got something to pay you back for now, and brother, you're gonna get it. Oh, glad to have you aboard, Lieutenant. Are you and Lieutenant Butler finding your quarters comfortable? I am, sir, but I can't say about Butler. Uh, don't look now, Skipper, but that little fat fellow down the deck there is a stowaway. Oh, thank you for telling me, Lieutenant. Nice ship you got here, Captain. Must have quite a crew. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we're short-handed. You don't say. Okay, so he has a football contract, which is both safer and more profitable than being a Marine, but that's a bad thing. Oh, hello everyone! I'm still trying to get my head around this movie. The film was made in 1938, which precedes the start of World War II, so it's not a stealth propaganda flick, but it's not advocating enlistment anyway, since it never says anything about service or patriotism. The only reason offered for why Jimmy should be in the Marines is that his father wants him to, and he'd be very good at it. Only the movie started with his father wanting to see him play football, something he's already good at, and we've just seen the introduction of Valerie, which is going to lead to a romantic subplot, and then Jimmy will be involved with defeating small arms smugglers and... 
I have no idea what to say about this movie. Trying to parse it is giving me an aneurysm. I I'm gonna go sit down. You go ahead and try to figure out what's going on in the second half of Come On Leathernecks. I wish you'd change your mind before we land in Manila. Change my mind? About what? About me. You asked me here to discuss the plantation. That's business. And this is a business trip, for me anyhow. <laughs> All right, then we'll talk business. Why, Jimmy Butler, why didn't you tell me you were sailing on the Madison? What? I... I haven't forgotten what you told me, that if we ever sail together, you'd dance me right across the Pacific. Did I say that? Well, I'll make good. Hello, Jimmy. Well, <laughs> do you want me to drink? No, thank you. You knew my name. You must have read about me in the paper. Yes, the ones I slipped under the door. <laughs> Those. Now, what's the strategy? Not that I don't like this, but I'd like to know what the plot is. Are you trying to make that other fellow jealous? Why, I'm surprised at you, Lieutenant. You called me Jimmy before. <laughs> Very well, Lieutenant Jimmy. Then who is it? Otto Wagner, if the name means anything to you. <laughs> he asked me who my tailor was. <laughs> I don't wonder. That was his suit you walked out in. His suit? <laughs> oh. Then it was his stateroom you let me into. I see how it is. Wait. I'm sorry. I got the wrong impression. Hey, you. Start here. Both hands. And hard. I'll be keeping my eye on you, fatty. There's some excuse for me. But what business can a girl like you possibly have in the Philippines? It's only partly business. I'm very anxious about Dick. Dick? My brother. And if he agrees with me that we ought to sell the plantation, we'll return to the States together. Oh. And where does Wagner fit in? Oh, maybe I shouldn't have asked, but it seemed to me from the hurry you were in to get away from him. You have a right to ask. Wagner leases the plantation. Pays us a good deal more than the place is actually worth. Maybe he struck a gold mine or something. <laughs> I'm serious. And now, if I can just stay out of his way, I'm sure I'll have a nice trip. And if you stay out of mine, I'll have a terrible one. So it's breakfast at 9, shuffleboard at 10, lunch, cocktails, dinner, and dancing. And so far into the night. Just think, in another day I'll have danced you all the way across the Pacific. And I'll have loved you. The Philippines dead ahead, and that's where I get off. You mean that's where we get off? Oh, but that's not the last stop for a Marine officer. You get to see the world. China, Japan, India. Yeah, according to the recruiting poster. And I will get to see them, too, if they have professional football teams. Do you play football? Do I play football? Lady, I don't like to brag, but in this pocket, I've got a contract that'll net me $30,000 playing professional football. And in this pocket is my resignation as second lieutenant of the United States Marine Corps. You honestly mean that you'd rather be a professional athlete than stay in the Marines? What's wrong with that? Why should I want to stay in the Marines? My father's in it, and what's he gotten out of it? In five years, he'll be retired as a colonel and spend the rest of his life puttering around in a garden in some little suburb on half pay. And where will you be in five years? A football hero that everybody's forgotten about. Nursing a scrapbook full of old clippings.
I'm sorry you look at it that way. I don't know. I may have a romantic view of what it means to be a Marine officer. But I just can't see you in any other light. Valerie, you're the first girl I ever knew that I wanted to do everything in the world for. But my mind's made up. It's as hard for me to say this to you as it will be to tell my father tomorrow. I had to tell you. I hope it won't make any difference. And I hope that something happens to make you change your mind. If you can't change it, nothing can. Well, let's not talk about it anymore. I have to go and pack. Come in. Compliments of Colonel Butler, sir. At ease, Slats. How have you been? Just fine, thank you, sir. How is the old fire eater? He's just fine, Lieutenant, sir. But he'll be feeling a lot finer when he clamps his eyes on that boy of his. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Is it a long walk to headquarters? I should say it is, sir. It's on the island of Palawan now, sir. Palawan? The Colonel sent me down a plane. We'll make it back in about four hours. Okay, but not a word to Lieutenant Butler where we're going. Those are orders. Aye, aye, sir. May I take the bags now, sir? Right. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Where are we? We're about ready to land, sir. I didn't ask you that. I said, where are we? You can tell him. We're over the island of Palawan, sir. Never heard of it. What's the colonel doing here? Somebody's running guns and ammunition off the island. The colonel thinks it's going to Far East, so we're trying to find him. There's Palawan now, sir, dead below. Well, here we are, sir. That's Colonel Butler's tent there, sir. You gonna tell him right away, Jim, don't you think? Listen, I didn't let you drag me halfway around the world so I could pull my punches. Well, Lieutenant Stolen and Butler reporting for duty, sir. Fine, fine. Glad to see you both. Thank you, sir. So we finally got here. Did you have a pleasant trip? No trouble? Um. No trouble at all, sir. Well, Jim, we're together at last. Yes, sir. Lieutenant of the United States Marine Corps. Certainly proud of you, Jim. Thanks, Dad. There's really not much to be proud of. Oh, don't you be so modest. You made a name for yourself playing football. You're going to make a name for yourself as a soldier, I know. Well, Jim, you arrived in the nick of time. Plenty of work to do on this island. Draw up a chair and sit down. Thanks, I'd rather stand. You've been waiting for this day a long time, and now that it's here, I bet you're just aching to get into action, aren't you? Dad, there's something I've got to tell you. It isn't easy to say, but we've always been honest with each other, and I've got to say it. What is it, son? You spoke of making a name for myself in football. Well, there's a great future in it for me, professionally. A chance to make a lot of money. And that's what I want to go into. You want to quit the service? Yes, sir. That's exactly what I came here to tell you. Why didn't you tell me that seven months ago when I came to see you play football? I tried. What brought you all the way out of here to the island of Palawan? Nothing, except that I wanted to tell you directly. After four years of the finest training in the world, you come out of Annapolis with a desire to play professional football. I've got a right to my own life and my own career. I don't want to be forced into one. Very well. Lieutenant Butter, I'll arrange for your resignation at once. Dismissed. Wait a minute. Until your resignation's approved, I can replace you with a real officer. You're going to act duty under Lieutenant Dolan. You'll assign your quarters and give you further orders. Dismissed. Jim, I think it's mighty swell of you not to... I don't care man. what you think. The less you have to say to me outside orders, the better I'll like it. Halt! Who's there? What 
is it, Lewis? I think I hear someone moving in the brush, sir. Come out and identify yourself or we'll shoot. It's me. How did you get here? I'm too weary to tell you right now. Have you got anything to eat? Yeah. Get him some beans. Beans? Oh, boy! There you are. Give me, boy! Aren't you gonna say hello to your old pal, Curly? Hello, Curly. Did you tell your papa yet? Sure, I told him. Then what are we waiting for? Come on! As soon as I finish these beans, there's no hurry. Swell, swell. We lost plenty of time already, but we'll make it up. Lieutenant, I think I hear someone on the lower road, sir. They've spotted a step on it. All right, men, the truck's on the double. Lieutenant Butler. Yes, sir. You take that road and I'll take this one in case they head back. Aye, aye, sir. Gimme, boy! Where you going? Come back here! We gotta go to Chicago! Cut that one? About two mile up here, sir. But they have a side road they can take before then. How far is it? Not very far, sir. Slide over and let me get at the wheel. Caught him, huh? Yes, sir. What's in those boxes? Machine guns and ammunition. Now we're getting someplace. Where's the truck and the men? We turned them loose. You what? They said they weren't trying to run this stuff. They found it accidentally and were on the way to the Marine camp to turn it over. So we saved them the trouble. You mean you fell for that gag? They think we did. You see, sir, in football, we often let the opposition get away with a few plays just to mislead them. But perhaps you wouldn't know about that. Perhaps not. But I do know this isn't football. Hereafter. We spotted weather pull-ups are near a big house about six miles up the road. Are you sure they didn't see you following them? I don't think so. We ran without lights. Very good, Sergeant. Sorry, Jim. I didn't get your plan at first. It's all right, sir. Lewis and Roberts, remain here to guard those boxes. Rest of you men into the cars. We've got a job to do. This is it, sir. Remain here with the men, Sergeant. You come with me, Lieutenant. Jimmy! Gee, I'm glad to see you. Is this your place? Yes, this is the place I told you about. Come on in. Oh, oh. Sorry, Miss Taylor, but we're under orders to search the premises. What seems to be the trouble, Val? Why, nothing, Dick. This is Lieutenant Butler and Lieutenant Dolan. How do you do? I've met the gentleman. Are these the two men you followed? No, these aren't the ones. We're after a gang that's been smuggling arms and ammunitions on this island. They may have some of the stuff hidden around here, so we'll just look around. Oh, we can't stop him. Hello. 
was a nice little reunion. Courting in real military style. You know why they're here. And I'm beginning to find out some things. Now listen, Val, don't go jumping at conclusions. There's nothing we have to worry about. Isn't there? Well, I want to be sure. I'm going to give them permission to search any part of the plantation they want to. Now, wait a minute. What's wrong with making a nice profit just for moving a few cases of goods from one end of the island to the other? There must be plenty wrong with it if it brings Marines to this island. Well, all right, go ahead. Show them around. Anything they might find, remember, it's on your property, not mine. That's right, Val. Why, it's the only way I could make some real money out of the place. Jan? Lieutenant? I'm going back to report to the Colonel. Post your men around this place. Nobody is to leave these grounds. Nothing is to be moved out unless you have orders from Colonel Butler or me. Understand that, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Wilson, have your detail come with me. Sergeant, post your men about the place. Aye, aye, sir. They'll take the front gate. Mike, take two men going the back. The rest of you men, segregate yourself along the side lane. Keep your eyes open. Go on, go on, go on. I'll handle this. Now, wait a minute. Please, let me go. Just as soon as you've heard what I've got to say. All you can tell me is where you've hidden those cases of ammunition. Why should I tell you or anybody else? After all, there are 70 cases of Mills bombs and machine gun ammunition. Nice little haul for Jimmy. You know how he likes me. <laughs> Those tin soldiers would railroad me to the penitentiary for 20 years, and your brother right along with me. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I'm willing to forget the stuff if I can get out of here. Have you any suggestions? Yes, I have one. You tell me where it's hidden and how much time you'll need. I'll take Jimmy there. Well, I need two hours. It'll take you just about that much time. You know where that cove is, about nine miles above? Come here, I'll draw you a map. Jimmy. What's all the excitement about? I found out why you were sent to the plantation. Well, that's no secret. I mean, I know where it is. Seventy cases of machine guns and ammunition. Wow, how did you find that out? Please, don't ask me how I found out. But I'm willing to show you where it's hidden. I'm willing only if you'll agree. You promise I know not... what you're trying to tell me. Your brother's mixed up in this, isn't he? Yes, but it's not his fault. After all, all you want is to confiscate the stuff, isn't it? Yes. In this case, that's all. Where is it? I'll take you there. It'll save time. I know every foot of the ground. All right, Valerie. Get in the front seat of my car. Well, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Some of the detail. We're leaving. Leaving, sir? That's my order. I beg your pardon, sir, but Lieutenant Dolan gave us orders to stay here, sir. I can't. You heard my order. Aye, aye, sir. <whistles> All right, man, in the car. We'll let it. Come on, snap into it. There wasn't a Marine in sight when we left the house. How'd you do it? You can thank the charming sister for that. That guy in charge of the Marine's butler is the fellow she fell for on the boat. Say, Val likes him. I, I wouldn't like her to get into trouble. She isn't going to get into any trouble. They're out riding in the moonlight. I don't like this. Oh, come on, we got to get this stuff loaded. All right, men, load up. We're moving. Give him a hand. Nick. Back to the house and wait till Miss Taylor returns. Get her aboard the boat, then we'll follow our original plan. Right. There's nobody in the house, Corporal. Let's look around. You stay here. truck. We may need him. Come on, let's get out of here. Six twenty-two. Five hours. I can't understand it. Did you find it? No, sir. Somewhere the stuff used to be and a lot of tire tracks leading away from it. All right. 
Assemble the details. Yes, sir. Something must have happened. That's obvious. Jim, you surely don't believe it. I believe I... what I see, and I don't see 70 cases of contraband. Oh, but this must be the place where Wagner sent all Oh, the... Wagner, your partner. Please. Save it. Sergeant? Yes, sir. Get the men aboard. We're going back. All right, board the truck, boys. Watch those rifles. Looks like Lieutenant Dolan's back, sir. All right, man, out you come. Compliments of Colonel Butler. His orders are for you to return to camp immediately. Under arrest. Under arrest? Where's Lieutenant Dolan? Sorry to report, sir. Lieutenant Dolan is missing. Corporal Wilson was found dead. Shot. Lieutenant Butler, no matter what motivated your actions, you've deliberately disobeyed orders. You proceed to your quarters under arrest, pending court martial. Sergeant, take every available man and search the islands until you find Lieutenant Dolan. Aye, aye, sir. I'd like to make one request, sir. You're short of officers. Let me remain on duty and join the search until Lieutenant Dolan's found. You have forfeited every right to give or take orders. Come on, get on that anchor. This is Miss Taylor, Captain. Howdy, Miss Taylor. I'd like to see my brother, please. Your brother? He ain't aboard. Why did you tell me my brother was here? Because Wagner told him to, ma'am. But there ain't nothing to get alarmed about. We're picking them all up at Mango Point. Just make yourself comfortable. You'll find a cabin aft there. Comes aboard, boys. Yep, that's it. There's no luck, sir. We couldn't find a trace of Lieutenant Dolan. Dismiss your details, Sergeant. Aye, aye, sir. Get out of here and leave me alone. Now, don't get excited. I only asked the question. Well, I'm tired of hearing it. Chicago, Chicago, I'm sick of the name. Yeah, well, don't forget, I got a contract with you, and you're no good to me down here. Now, when do we leave for... The Windy City. Get out of here. Take it easy. I didn't say Chicago. You better get some rest. Someone to see you, sir. Oh, it's you. I thought I made it plain I didn't want to see you. But this time you've got to, Jim. I found out where they've taken High Dolan. Sure. Don't tell me. Let me guess. I suppose he's hiding under a pineapple. Please listen to me, Jimmy. I've been on the boat that's going to pick them all up at Mango Point. And they stopped the boat so you could get off and tell me. Look at me. Do I look as though they let me off? I had to jump overboard to get away from them. Well, why come to me? Why didn't you go to the Colonel? I tried to, but he doesn't believe me any more than you do. Valerie, I'd like to believe But you've got to. Don't you see? This is your only chance to save High Dolan. We're both responsible. The boat's on its way now. It'll be there in a few hours. Don't you see how little time we have? I may be getting in deeper. Anyway. Sentry. Yes, sir. What's the matter here? Lieutenant Butler just got away in that direction. He's gone to Mango Point to try and save Lieutenant Dolan. All your men aboard the trucks, full equipment. Aye, aye, sir. All right, you men aboard that truck, full equipment. All right, you men on the double, get any 
say goodbye. What are you gonna do? What do you think I'm gonna do? Leave this guy here to tell the Marines where we've gone? No, you don't. Oh, my arm. A couple of you men take care of me. Hey, Wagner! Wagner! Don't unload that truck. That boat's full of Marines. What do you mean? How'd they get there? Somebody saw Valerie going aboard and tipped the Leatherneck. All she wants is to get her brother out of trouble. Yeah? Well, why are you tipping us? I'm not doing this for your benefit. I'm trying to help Valerie get Dick out of a spot. Don't believe him. Save your lip. Get that stuff back on the trucks. If you're lying... Stop here. You two are going with us. Hey, Wagner! The Marines are coming. Yeah, yeah, I know. Give those men a hand. Truckloads, full of them. Over that road. Why, you old son of a gun? Come on, you Leatherneck! What are you going to do now, Wagner? Just watch. Break over those top cases. Come on, get in there. Dress the line up. Come on, come on. Hurry up. there in plain sight, and then you'll see what happens. Go on. She's firing. Yes. Ahoy down there! Hey, that's Jimmy! Get down, Jimmy, get down! Oh, there goes my quarterback! Ahoy down there! See what he wants. Yes, sir. Yes, Lieutenant! All right, Butler. Tell them to get back on the trucks and beat it, or there'll be minus two more Marines. All I gotta say is give it to them, you Leathernecks! got a chance to reach the top of that bluff alive. I've got an idea. What is it? A little lesson you taught me. I'm going to measure out a mile on my knees. I'd better go along just to check on you. <laughs> Say, this is better than football. I could enjoy this if I knew my boy was all right.
Second Lieutenant James Butler, for distinguished service and valor in action, court martial proceedings against you will be dropped. You're herewith reinstated to active duty. Thank you, sir. Here are your transfer papers and a recommendation to the commanding officer at San Diego for the acceptance of your resignation from the United States Marine Corps. I've changed my mind, sir. I'd like to remain with you and the service. We'll both be glad to have you. You see this contract? I'm a bit fat, sir, but if you'd have me, I'd like to join the Marines. I think we can find a place for you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And now, sir, may I be excused? Certainly, Lieutenant. Sergeant, dismiss the company. Aye, yes, sir. Isn't it wonderful? He's going to stay in the Marines. That's right. And so are you. Pardon me. I see you got yourself a new manager. <laughs> that was tonight's movie, Come on Leathernecks. It can bite me. Here's a preview of our next movie. Jeez, how are we going to spin this one? Is it a film about dark obsession? Life is but an empty bubble. Maybe a movie about science gone wrong. Oh, how about a good old-fashioned murder? I beg your pardon. Ah, you're right, Godfrey. There's no gain around it. It's the screwball comedy classic My Man Godfrey, next time on the Busan Midnight Movie. Tommy, there's a very peculiar mental process called thinking. You wouldn't know much about that. Yeah, great. Whatever. If you enjoyed yourself, wow, that's impressive. Anyway, like, share, and subscribe, and as always, stay safe, stay inside, and stay spooky. Hey folks, just a short addendum here at the end. I was invited to be a guest on last week's episode of Pseudo Cinema, where Danny, Peter, and I discussed Roger Corman's original Little Shop of Horrors. So if you missed my endless bloviating about film, that's where you can get your fix. I had a great time, I want to thank Peter and Danny for having me. Check out the video on their channel for great discussions of lost and obscure films, and I will see you next time, right here. Thanks. <laughs>